What do you mean by a single phase half bridge inverter? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term single phase half bridge inverter? Well, let's find out. So before we understand what you mean by single phase half bridge inverter, you have to know what you mean by the term inverter. So what do you actually mean by the term inverter? It is very simple. You guys might even have an inverter device at your house. So what an inverter does is that it converts DC voltage to AC voltage. So in your houses, when you say you have an inverter, you would also see that there is a battery along with it. So this battery stores DC electricity. So DC current or DC voltage is stored inside this battery. But this DC electricity can't be supplied to the devices or appliances or the plugs that are present inside your house because all those devices are designed to work with AC electricity. So this particular DC electricity that is stored inside the battery must be converted to AC electricity. So for this purpose, we use a device referred to as an inverter. So drawing a basic diagram like this, if this is an inverter, then it is a device that converts DC electricity to AC electricity as simple as that. So this is what you refer to as an inverter. So what do you actually mean by the term single phase half bridge inverter? Well, let's find out. So here to understand the term single phase half bridge inverter, let's construct the simple circuit diagram of a single phase half bridge inverter. So here we saw that an inverter is a device that converts DC electricity to AC electricity. So therefore, obviously there must be a DC voltage source here. But here, since it is a half bridge inverter, this particular DC voltage source is divided into two equal halves. That is, it is bisected into two equal halves. So if Vs is the voltage source, DC voltage source, then it is divided into two parts, say Vs by 2 and Vs by 2, like this. So here, this is Vs by 2. And this is Vs by 2. So therefore here we have two voltage sources like this, which is divided into two halves, Vs by 2 and Vs by 2. And now these voltage sources are connected to a particular diode like this. They are connected to two particular diodes like this. And now across these diodes, another semiconductor device referred to as an SCR is connected like this. So an SCR is basically a semiconductor device which has got a third terminal here. So when a triggering pulse is given to this particular terminal, it starts becoming conducting. That is, it starts conducting electricity only when a triggering pulse is given to this terminal. If a triggering pulse is not given to that terminal, it won't conduct. So that is the speciality of using an SCR. So now here a particular load is connected to this particular circuit like this. So a particular load is connected like this. So this load is not solely a resistive load. It has also got an inductive properties and also capacitive properties. That is, we can say that this is an LCR load. And here, these two diodes are provided for the purpose of conducting damping current. Damping current is a current that gets discharged when the capacitors and the inductors inside this particular load starts discharging. So when it discharges, it has to have some kind of a path through which the electricity has to flow. That is why we provide these two diodes for the purpose of conducting damping current. So now here, so let this be D1, let this be D2, and let this be T1, and let this be T2. So now, let us see the working of this particular circuit. First, let us give a triggering pulse to this particular T1. So a triggering pulse, Tg1, is given to this particular SCR. So what we observe is that, this particular SCR becomes conducting and this particular SCR is not conducting because the triggering pulse is given here. So therefore now this is on. So therefore when this particular SCR is in the conducting state, we see that voltage starts flowing like this and therefore current starts flowing through this particular loop like this. And therefore as a result of this, a polarity of plus minus happens over here. That is what happens when a triggering voltage is given here. Next, let us give a triggering voltage over here, that is to this particular SCR. So when a triggering voltage, say Tg2 is given to here, this becomes conducting and this does not conduct. And therefore, a current starts flowing like this. 
that is it passes through here like this 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 so it starts flowing like this so therefore polarity of plus minus happens over here so this is what happens when the triggering voltage is given to these two particular SCRs. So therefore, when we obtain the output voltage across the load, we see that it becomes plus, minus, plus, minus. That is, it becomes somewhat like this, plus, minus, plus, minus. The polarity is rapidly changing over here. And therefore, some kind of AC properties are obtained here. So now, let us see the waveforms that are associated with this. Because this particular load can either be overdamped or underdamped LCR circuit. Because when it is in the overdamped and the underdamped condition, the current either leads or lags behind. So therefore, when it leads or lags behind, that is when this particular dampening diode comes into play. How is that? Well, let's find out. Next, let us see the waveforms that are associated with a single phase half bridge inverter, which will help you guys understand a bit more clearly behind the working of a particular single phase half bridge inverter. So first case, let us assume that a particular triggering pulse is given to this particular T1. So if here this is represented by IG1. So when a particular triggering pulse like this is given to this particular T1, what we observe is that a particular output voltage V0 is obtained like this because it starts conducting like this and current starts flowing like this and therefore a plus minus like this gets induced over here and therefore a positive value of V0 is obtained. And now next when we give a particular triggering pulse to this particular SCR like this what we observe is that this particular SCR starts conducting and therefore current starts flowing like this. And therefore, a polarity of plus minus gets induced over here, which is the inverse of this particular V0. So therefore, we get something like this. And now, again, when we give a particular triggering pulse to this particular SCR, a positive value is obtained. And again, when we give a triggering pulse to this particular SCR, which is this particular SCR, we get a negative value like this. So therefore, we get an alternating plus minus plus minus kind of a voltage here. So now, first case, let us assume that we take an underdamped LCR circuit over here. So an LCR circuit can be in two cases, either in an underdamped case or in an overdamped case. So let us see the two cases. Okay. So first, let us see that an underdamped LCR circuit is placed here in this particular load. So when an underdamped LCR circuit is placed as a load, what we observe is that the current will lead ahead of this particular voltage. That is, the current will be leading, that is, the voltage will be lagging behind. So therefore, leading current is obtained like this. So we obtain something like this. So here what we observe is that this much time is the time for which this particular switch is on. That is this particular SCR is on. That is T1. That is the voltage is positive and the current is positive. But when we go here, when we observe this much portion, that is this shaded portion, what we observe is that the voltage is positive but the current is negative. This happens because of the discharging effect of the inductors and the capacitors present inside this particular LCR circuit. So over here, we observe that a polarity of plus minus is obtained over here and therefore a current starts flowing like this through this particular diode D2. So therefore, this negative current happens because of this particular diode D2. This is why these diodes D1 and D2 come into play here. So this happens because the D2 is in the conducting state. That is D2 is on. Now next here, this much portion is a portion where the voltage is negative and the current is also negative. So that is when this particular SCR T2 is on. So this happens due to T2. But when we observe here, we obtain a particular region in which a particular voltage is negative but current is positive. So that happens because of the discharging effect in this particular loop like this. That happens because the diode D1 is now on. So this happens because of diode D1. And again here what we observe is that both voltage and current are in the positive state and that happens because of T1. And again here when the voltage is positive the current is negative which happens due to D2. So it goes on like this. This is the case of the output current across this particular load when it is in the under damped situation. That is we use an under damped LCR as the load. Next let us see the case when we use an overdamped LCR as a load. When we use an overdamped LCR as a load, what we observe is that the current 
lags behind the voltage the current lags behind the voltage and therefore the voltage leads ahead of the current so therefore while drawing the output current we would obtain something like this a lagging current is obtained like this so therefore here what we observe is that when the voltage is positive the current is negative over here that happens because d1 is conducting and now here when the voltage is positive the current is also positive that happens because t1 is now on now next what we see is that when the voltage is negative the current is positive that here happens due to d2 and now here when the voltage is negative the current is negative that happens due to t2 so therefore these thus are the basic waveforms that are associated with a single phase half bridge inverter as simple as that so guys this thus is what you refer to as a single phase half bridge inverter as simple as that so i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a single phase half bridge inverter and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed until next time i'll see you guys in the next video thank you